Bună seara, bine ați venit la Esențial. Discutăm astăzi despre economie din nou și în special astăzi avem o temă specifică, aș numi eu, este o temă de mare actualitate, vorbim despre energie. Astăzi împreună cu domnul Frank Nel, este membru al directoratului OMV Petrom și responsabil pentru gaze și electricitate la OMV Petrom. Bună seara, domnule Nel, bine ați venit! Bună seara! Bună seara! Thank you for the invitation! Vă propun să plecăm cu discuția noastră de la securitatea energetică, acest concept. Explicați, vă rog, cum s-a schimbat conceptul de securitate energetică odată cu începerea războiului din Ucraina. Thank you for the question. I think energy security of energy, security of supply, it's a very complex issue, but I think we can make it simple in terms of definition, let's say, It's about to have an interrupt of supply of energy at affordable price. And that's make it simple in terms of definition. But of course, all the complexity is to make sure that you can always match the demand of your country with the supply of energy, gas or electricity. And what we have seen with the, the Russian crisis is, I think, several things in terms of impact of the, on the security of supply. One, of course, the dependency of Europe on gas and uh, has created this uh, major issue in terms of replacement and diversification of, uh, of supply. And different countries in Europe have different issues uh, because of different way to manage the security of supply. And uh, of course, the impact on price, because as soon as the supply has, has decreased of the Russian gas, we have seen an increase of uh, price on, the, on, the, on gas in Europe worldwide as well, but also in Europe. And um, uh, this impact also crude price on oil, not only uh, gas. Ok. Uh, care este contribuția OMV Petrom la securitatea energetică a României? So, OMV Petrom in Romania supply roughly one third of uh, the needs in, uh, in crude uh, petroleum products and, uh, and, um, and gas, and about uh, 10 to 10 to 12 percent of the electricity need of, of Romania. So we are very st strong contributor to the security of supply of, uh, of Romania. Of course, everybody knows our petrol station and the uh, and what we are very proud in this uh, crisis and what happened during this time. The line between the COVID crisis and after the Russian crisis is we always have supply on our petrol station, which is you know an important uh, aspect of security of supply but also gas and electricity for our customers. And I think we are, it's one of our key value in terms of the companies to make sure that to our customers, we deliver what we promise. Ce credeți că ar trebui făcut pentru ca România și Uniunea Europeană să aibă o securitate energetică în următorii ani? And in terms of uh, the continuum on security of supply and what Petrom is doing in Romania, I think the most important is what we announced in uh, 2021 in terms of investment in Romania, in terms of uh, energy transition, but also in security of supply. So we are looking at investing at least one gigawatt of renewable power, so which will bring more power, of course, for the for the market. We are intend to develop the gas sea, uh, the gas sorry, the black sea, the gas in the black sea, so which also will enable to secure additional source of gas for. For Romania. So all this investment in the in our strategy, even if I include biofuel, will improve the production of uh, the product which are needed for the market. So I think that's an important uh, contribution of uh, OMV Petrom for the security of supplies of Romania, not just what we have done in the past, and we are very proud of that, but what we plan for the future for the next 10 years. Okay. Uh ce, ce ar trebui făcut pentru ca România și Uniunea Europeană să aibă uh, securitatea energetică să beneficieze de acest concept în următorii ani, în viitor? So, there is a lot of discussion at the moment at the European Union on this topic. Uh, I think there is two things are, uh, ongoing at the moment. Some measures were short term, so in terms of the crisis now, the Russian crisis. So, we are concerning about the, uh, the gas market. There is also short-term measure we expect on the power market, uh, but they are, they are really short-term measures. So it's not something we will help necessarily security of supply for the future. So what we 
work with the European Union as, a, of course, an uh, industrial players on the market is to make sure that we have the right incentive to invest in production, because I think that's the most important for Europe. We have seen with the Russian crisis, the diversity of supply and more important to produce locally. So what we need from European Union is the support for local producer and not to uh, just think about import of uh, the, the product we, that the population needs in terms of gas, electricity or, uh, or oil products. So what, what we are really arguing is it is important for the future of Europe, for the competitiveness of the industry in Europe to make sure we produce energy locally. Ok, um, traversăm o tranziție energetică. Uh, spre ce tip de energie ne îndreptăm și la ce prețuri? So, uh, energy transition is part of our strategy also as OMB Petrom. So, uh, in the strategy we uh, uh, published in December 2021, we announced that 35% of our investment in 2030 will be in the energy transition. So I think it's an important uh, message to the market also in terms of our contribution to, to the energy transition. There is no, uh, clearly there is no alternative. We see it every day, the impact of the climate change, and we know that it's important to, uh, uh, to invest in this energy transition. So we need to make sure uh, for uh, all the um, uh, players on the market and with the stakeholders, we are moving in this direction. And in terms of uh, uh, renewable energy, we are looking at photovoltaic, we are talking about uh, wind, uh, wind energy, but also we consider gas as part of the, uh, uh, the energy transition because you need to switch from coal to gas, which will have a, a 50% decrease in terms of uh, CO2 emissions. So it's a benefit for, for the uh, emission, at, uh, especially in countries in Southeast Europe, where you still have uh, quite a lot of coal producer, so including Romania. And we want also to develop, you know, in maybe a later stage, hydrogen, because uh, uh, green or blue hydrogen. So we define colors, but what it means is a low CO2 uh, hydrogen uh, component uh, on the market to be able to replace uh, gas in the future, but also to replace heat in a process where there is no alternative in terms of uh, 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 green energy. So definitely uh, hydrogen will be uh, uh, later on a, a solution. But short term, we need to focus on the uh, renewable energy and the uh, development of gas to make sure by 2030 we have some uh, uh, impact on the emission. Bun. Uh, producția, ați vorbit iată și despre acest lucru, producția pe bază de cărbune uh, va trebui, să spunem, uh, oprită sau uh, în orice caz încetinită. OEV Petrol are un proiect de investiții la uh, compania, complexul energetic Oltenia. De puteți da câteva amănunte în ce constă acest proiect de investiții? Yes, thank you for this question. I think it's an, we are very proud to have make an announcement with uh, the complex energetic Oltenia this uh, this year. It's one of the major step in terms of the implementation of our strategy because it's not just about to to announce a strategy, it's also to implement. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is one of the biggest project in, in Romania in terms of si size of uh, photovoltaic. We are talking about that. 450 megawatt uh, between Oltenia and, and, uh, and OMV Petrom. It will be a joint venture, 50-50. So it's also, I think, a good, uh, a good way to work together, uh, to have a balanced uh, relationship in, uh, between the two players. And uh, this will have a strong contribution, not only in Romania in terms of uh, emission, but also for Oltenia in their energy transition. So it's, it helps, of course, Petrom in his energy transition. But also Oltenia, who has some target in terms of reducing the, the coal, switching to gas and to photovoltaic. So that will be a part of this project. And we are the first to have a, a sign with, a, with Oltenia. So we are very proud of that. And now we, we are moving in the implementation, uh, the construction, of course, that we want to start as soon as possible next year. Uh o să vă rog să ne întoarcem la tranziția energetică. Are tranziția energetică europeană ținte prea ambițioase? Ar trebui ele modificate? Ce credeți? I think, you know, if you listen to the, you look at the COP27 and the uh, feedback, I think the population is more and more concerned about the climate change. So I think there's no way to come back in terms of energy transition and to come back to different targets. I think we are all 
uh, aware that the energy transition needs to be even accelerated if we want to achieve our target by 2030. We are working uh, uh, with the authorities in terms of how to achieve in terms of emission in transport. And uh, we have created with um, uh, inside Concordia, so the employee uh, association, employer association uh, for future for transport. And I think it's important also to see how to decarbonize the transport by 2030, how we can achieve that and to reach the European target. So we don't think they are over uh, optimist. And I think we, we can, maybe we need to start now. We need to make sure the climate for investment is right. Uh, there is a lot of effort to do, but we think they are achievable. And definitely we are committed to match this target as Romania at OMV Petrom level. So on the, um, the transport, but also, of course, on decarbonization of the uh, electricity sectors and uh, how to green the gas as well, because there is also a way to talk about hydrogen, it's a way to green the gas, uh, biomethane also potentially in the future as well. So there's different way to achieve our decarbonization target by 2030. But again, I think what is important is to make sure we create a climate we use the EU fund available from the uh, European Union to accelerate because we cannot waste time, definitely. And the people will not accept that. What is the opinion of the gas in the quality of the combustible transition? We know that the Union European has catalogued, has classified the gas natural as a combustible transition. How can we understand more clearly this role of the gas? Yes, in fact, there was a lot of discussion. Uh, it was the beginning of uh, this year, on the end of last year, uh, in a com quite a complex uh, document, uh, which I mean, I'm not going to explain this document, but about what, what is the role of gas, exactly your question, in this energy transition. And I think we achieved to um, uh, uh, understanding with the European Union is you cannot switch to 100% renewable power uh, from day one to day two without having the gas as a, as a fuel for the energy transition. And even looking uh, further by 2040, 2050, you will still need some gas. Alors, for what? You know, the question is, uh, why, why you still need gas? First of all, what we look at the uh, renewable power, everybody knows, I understand that when it's not, there is no wind, there is no sun, you don't have a, a power production. You can use some battery, but battery, you have one, two hours autonomy. It's not like it's, if you have all the night uh, without power, you need to find an alternative. So definitely gas play a role in this because the gas power plant are very flexible. So they can move fast uh, in terms of uh, power demand, depending on the wind and the sun. So it's unique on the market. There's not too many assets you can use, uh, power plant you can use in this uh, balancing of the network. So this will stay, and even looking at 2040, it may, we may have to increase the number of gas power plants to be able to match the, the renewable uh, power uh, increase of capacity uh, by 2040. So that's one of the uh, key uh, role of gas. Mobility as well, you know, when we look at truck and uh, different countries in Europe already uh, started to develop uh, uh, using gas, uh, what we call liquefied natural gas. Because when you look at the battery for truck, you know, the size of the battery are huge, take a lot of weight, and trucks needs to be able to load things, not to load battery, and um, uh, in terms of transport. So uh, uh, na uh, liquid nat natural gas as a versus diesel as a benefit, not necessarily huge in terms of CO2, but in terms of particles. So if you look at uh, emission and pollution in the uh, cities, particles is more an issue than the CO2. And uh, that will be a benefit to use uh, a gas uh, for this uh, truck. So this is already under development in Europe. Uh, we want to also uh, push this type of mobility in, uh, in, uh, in Romania uh, for LNG. CNG, which is for cars, uh, compressed natural gas, is already existing, but needs to be developed. And we want to contribute to this, to this development. Now, if you look at Romania, there is also still a lot of villages who are using woods, you know, uh, or coal for heating, uh, which is more polluted than the gas. So very still, and the government is also as a as a, a plan in terms of uh, conversion of the, the villages and small cities to gas to be able to uh, reduce the emission in, in the, on the countryside. So this will certainly increase the gas demand, and uh, at least during the transition, if later on we use 
low carbon uh, uh, gas, like a green gas, like uh, using hydrogen or using um, uh, biogas. So it's, it's part of uh, winning now the battles against CO2 by having the gas as an alternative to more fossil fuel uh, CO2 content. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fight, in fact, to win uh, uh, on short term and important to win. Long term, what we see also is um, if you look at the way to produce hydrogen, today we produce hydrogen mainly with gas, but if we can capture the CO2 from the production of hydrogen, you have an hydrogen which is produced with gas but with no CO2. And this will be uh, uh, certainly very valuable in Romania where you are a gas producer. So having the gas, be able to produce um, a low carbon uh, uh, hydrogen, with the CO2 storage. The CO2 you can store in the Black Sea, for example, you know, there is some potential there, which we have demonstrated already. So we are working with the government to develop this blue hydrogen economy, uh, which will be very valuable for the industry who wants to switch to a, a, a low carbon uh, gas and uh, population as well, and potentially even be an export uh, if uh, we produce more than what uh, is needed in, uh, in, in Romania. Bun, ați vorbit uh, ceva mai devreme despre proiectele privind energia verde, dar vă rog să mai detaliați. Care sunt proiectele OMV Petrom privind uh, energia verde? So, if we look at the, the, the Black Sea and the development of the Black Sea, it's really a, a huge opportunity for Romania. And I think our, our CEO, uh, Cristina Vercher, is always mentioning this uh, in a different interview. Romania has a, a form, amazing opportunity by being uh, the first uh, EU producer of gas and be an exporter of gas and be a, have a, a place in, in Europe, of, of course, uh, very important due to this uh, gas production. So that's a huge opportunity for Romania. It's also a huge opportunity for MV Petrom, of course, with our partner uh, to develop this, uh, this gas field. And we are convinced that this will help the energy transition because, as I mentioned before, you will need gas for to switch from coal to gas and you will need gas also for the production of hydrogen in a, and a, again from a low carbon hydrogen uh, in, the, in the future. So we end again the development of the gas grid uh, as such. It's also in terms of security of supply because, you know, at the end we need we still import gas today. Uh, so to, to be a, having the gas uh, from the north, from the Black Sea will help To, uh, to be not uh, self-sufficient and even more than that. Uh, care sunt proiectele privind uh, energia verde, green energy? Uh, as I mentioned before, in our energy transition, we uh, what we publish in December 21 in our OMV Petrom strategy, we say we will uh, uh, put roughly 3.7 billion uh, euro uh, will be invested in, fi in to finance cleaner energy project. So that's uh, a strong commitment for OMB Petrom. Um, we, what type of project we want to do in that? I will say part is linked to, I mentioned, the uh, decarbonization of the uh, transport uh, sectors. So here we're talking about uh, biofuel, but also uh, EV charger. So uh, all the infrastructure for electrical vehicles. Um, we have also uh, a large part which is linked to the renewable energy of course, to decarbonize our electricity and to make sure we contribute to the target of uh, Romania uh, by 2030. And um, there is another part which is um, uh, around the decarbonization by storage of the CO2. So what we see in Romania, due to the uh, historical situation of Romania being a producer of oil and gas, you have a lot of uh, gas field, you have uh, the, the offshore situation as well. There is a potential for uh, carbon storage in Romania is not easy in Europe. You know, there's not too many countries. The, the, the main storage uh, operator today are in Norway, uh, but in the North Sea. And we think we can re replicate uh, a different uh, scheme in Romania. Uh, and that will contribute to the uh, CO2 and decarbonization of uh, Romania. Not just to MV Petrom, but uh, as, a, as a country, because it's a It will be a service for, for other customers to uh, store the carbon uh, as OMV Petrom. So uh, that's something which uh, we, uh, uh, we want to develop. It's more than by 2030, the late years of 2030, uh, but it's definitely part of our plan. And of course, we are looking as also at uh, whatever EU fund we could 
capture to increase potentially our, our investment in, uh, in, in Romania. Uh, și încă o chestiune legată de energia verde. Credeți că proiectele de energie verde vor putea înlocui capacitățile clasice de producție și cam când s-ar putea întâmpla acest lucru? It will take some time. You know, we need to uh, be also, uh, uh, I'm say, uh, realistic in terms of energy transition. As uh, as I said before, we should not lose time. I think that's important. So to start as soon as possible. Uh, what Petrom has already started, so we are quite uh, very happy that our implementation of our strategy is going in the right direction with what we announced already with a complex energetic Oltenia in terms of project and also uh, uh, EV charger we are putting in place in our petrol station. And we'll, we have a further plan, you will see uh, hopefully soon in the press a different uh, achievement of OMV Petrom in the energy transition. Uh, but it will take some time and I think what we need is to make sure we have some um, stability, you know, in terms of legislation, in terms of regulation, because we commit for investment for long term. And if we want to make sure that there is no slowing down of investment, uh, that the climate for investors is here. And today we see a lot of change this year in terms of regulation, a lot of uh, uh, due to this energy crisis, of course, so we understand that the regulator and the government will try to mitigate the impact. But this creates also a lot of confusion. And I think we need to make sure if we want to, to achieve our target in terms of energy transition, uh, that we, by 2030, because I like to have 2025, 2030 to, to, to be clear in terms of target, to make sure that the climate is, is uh, favorable for investment and with some stability. I think today the lack of stability is a risk in terms of uh, uh, achieving the energy transition. So we are working with the Uh, with the stakeholders and the authorities to make sure that we are moving to a, a more stable uh, environment to make sure we are able to, to invest. And the other point as well, which I want to highlight, is Romania is, has a chance to have access to quite a large amount of EU funds for the energy transition. Let's make sure we use it as soon as possible to get the benefit as soon as possible. Because the energy crisis show that we need more production We need more asset. We need to develop new capacity in Romania, and the EU fund will help in this environment, which is not stable, at least to reduce our risk. Sumesc și acum vă ajuga să trageți o concluzie a discuției noastre. Our conclusion, please. So, a conclusion. I think what's just highlighted now. I think OMV Petrom is uh, certainly uh, we are proud to be one of the pillars of Romania for energy security. Definitely in oil, in, uh, in gas, in electricity, uh, uh, that's clearly our, and our ambitions. ambition is to be a pillar for the future, for energy security, but also in the transition of energy. So not just in the traditional sectors where we used to be active, but to be also the partner of Romania for the energy transition, to bring the green, green fuels, the green uh, uh, gas, green electricity for, for the market. And I think it's, uh, we achieve, we want to invest in Romania. So I think it's also very important in terms of our 11 billion euro investment plan we have till 2030 in Romania. And we want to commit to deliver that. But we need some stability. We need to make sure, maximize the, uh, the uh, EU fund for, to support this investment and to reduce the risk in this current environment. Vă mulțumesc, mulțumesc pentru prezența la RFI. Mulțumesc și eu pentru informațiile oferite. A fost alături de noi Frag Nele, membru al directoratului OMV Petrom și responsabil pentru gaze și electricitate la OMV Petrom. De asemenea, îi mulțumesc încă o dată pentru prezență. Ați ascultat esențial. Eu sunt Constantin Rudnitschi și vă invit ca de obicei să rămâneți pe RFI.